afternoon. It's so good for us to be together today. Students, faculty, staff, family, and friends. In some ways, our remote format is a blessing, for it's enabled so many to join us who wouldn't have been able to come to campus. For this, we can be grateful, and gratitude is a fitting start for this celebration. For our students, who have researched, written, and presented, who have learned, grown, and created, who have taught us and made us better, we give thanks. For our faculty who have shared knowledge, fostered intellectual curiosity, modeled flexibility, and cared deeply, we give thanks. For our staff who have listened, cleaned, protected, financed, supervised, played, and mentored, we give thanks. For the families of our students who have supported and nurtured, who have worked hard to finance what they can, who have paid attention and stepped back, we give thanks. For the friends who have remained constant even from afar, who were there for laughter and tears, who encouraged and challenged, we give thanks. We're facing difficult times with a, with a global health pandemic and structural racism evident again and again and again. We are acknowledging and celebrating today intellect, accomplishment, commitment, activism, dedication. These skills and gifts are needed desperately in small and large ways. And so even as we give thanks, we must commit ourselves and our gifts and skills to change and impact our world, our country, in profound and immediate ways, may it be so. Thank you, Cynthia, for such moving words. Good afternoon, Gophers, and good afternoon to the friends and family of the Goucher community. I'd like to welcome you to our 2020 Spring Convocation. Now, we take this time every year to come together and celebrate the many talents and accomplishments of our amazing students, to honor and thank our faculty and staff. And this year we come together virtually as a Goucher College community. So congratulations to all of our seniors, you made it. By this point, you have become Zoom masters, conversant in the ways of maintaining the illusion that you're actually following the professor online while carrying on three simultaneous chat conversations. This is not how any of us imagined your final semester at Goucher would be. However, as we take the time today to celebrate all your accomplishments, it becomes very clear that you have not let this last semester define you. I would also like to congratulate our Welch Center graduates. I know the determination it takes to arrive at this moment. And we are incredibly proud of all of you. So I wanna thank our staff, faculty, family, and friends for the support you have shown our students over the years and for joining us here today. I'm now excited to go over the Gopher Kindness Award. Kindness at work has profound effects on morale, productivity, and affinity to an organization. When we treat each other with kindness, we come together in a contributory manner that raises the group to greater heights. When kindness is promoted in the workplace, connections are made, trust is established, and a willingness to collaborate comes naturally. 
Go for Kindness is a peer nominated program intended to encourage employees to recognize one another for their random acts of kindness, caring, and support at Goucher College. For the 2019 2020 academic year, faculty and staff members across all divisions of the college were nominated for a monthly award. Today, we recognize the significance of how their kindness has strengthened our community and helped to make Goucher a great place to work. I'm excited to now present the nominees. After naming our nominees, I will then pull a winner. Mark Allville, Daniela Beal, Stephanie Cauldron, Lawrence Dixon, Maggie Dye, Amy Eddy, Julia Felscher, Pamela Flinton, Kim Gallatin, Janelle Hassel, Christine Krieger, Thomason LeMay, Jenny Linkowski, Don Luciano, Alice Miller, Emily Pearl, Aisha Rivers, Rob Smith, Cindy Van Els, Andy Wojtek, and last but not least, Stephen Wallace. And the winner is Christine Krieger. Congratulations. I guess I'm not such a Zoom master after, even after all this time, I forgot to unmute. To be an employee at Goucher College is to go above and beyond. This year in particular, all staff members have more than risen to the occasion. They have excelled and served our students, one another, and the college. In this fourth year of the Staff Excellence Award, nearly 50 staff members from all divisions received over 90 nominations. Congratulations and thanks to all those who were nominated and to all our amazing staff members. Our committee worked really hard to select the following five winners of the Staff Excellence Awards this year. Carrie Beth Ent, Director of the Health Center, received multiple nominations and was a clear winner for our committee. One nominator wrote, Carrie Beth has been instrumental in helping the college administration make decisions for spring semester as well as being a medical expert as the task force works to make decisions about the fall. She has been fierce in advocating for what she knows and believes is best for the college and its people. Another wrote, before this pandemic, Carrie Beth was still a model staff member and a tremendous human being. I don't mean to say that everything she's contributed has been in the last two months. On the contrary, I would have nominated her even before this whole COVID outbreak. She's a consummate team player, always lending, willing to lend a hand and collaborate. She is loved by so many students and she makes it a point to connect with them where they are, explain the health process and ensure that they fully understand. And of course the nominators mentioned the three Red Cross blood drives that Carrie Beth has organized and hosted. John Pirelli, webmaster extraordinaire. Writing of the Spring Symposium, a colleague wrote that in the very short time we had to reimagine the symposium, John was essential in helping guide us through how we could host this on our website. His endless patience, dedication, and many hours spent creating the platform for a successful symposium event is so appreciated. Given that the group did not have an official chair, he often found himself in a leadership role that wasn't assigned, but was necessary in the moment. He rose to the challenge and this virtual Goucher symposium would not have happened without him. And another colleague wrote, whatever he works with, John makes the end product look outstanding, in turn making the person or department responsible for the content look great. It's this excellent work that grabs the attention of potential students and those that are currently with us. John truly exemplifies the qualities of this Staff Excellence Award. A staff colleague wrote of Aisha Rivers, Aisha is deserving of this award because she continually shows up for our students. She's created an atmosphere and space within student engagement that allows students to come and interact and feel safe while doing so. 
More importantly, in this time, while we've had to unexpectedly begin distance learning, Aisha has kept the ball rolling with creative, new, and innovative ways to keep the students virtually engaged. And a student says of Aisha that she genuinely cares a great deal about any and all students that seek out help from her. She will always make time to speak to students, even when her schedule doesn't technically allow for it. She brings joy and positivity to all spaces she enters. Gwen Probst received a collaborative nomination from all the center directors with whom she works. They wrote, we are so grateful to have her as our operations assistant. Gwen is a quick learner, an enthusiastic partner, and an integral member of our center who consistently puts students at the center of every concern. She helps with whatever needs doing, whether it's a tedious task or one that requires skills she doesn't yet have. She'll learn the necessary skills and she'll be excited about learning them. And finally, Betsy Meredith, who was nominated by several post-bac students, who, one sums it up this way. The Goucher post-bac program is light, widely recognized as the best post-bac program in the country. And that distinction is due primarily to Betsy's hard work and dedication to post-bac students. Betsy's work begins with thoughtfully putting together a class of 32 students and communicating extensively with them before they even arrive on campus. Not only does this increase our sense of being cared for, but it also begins the process of forming class cohesiveness, which is a huge asset during the academically rigorous year ahead. Congratulations to these five outstanding staff members and many thanks to all. So I get the joy and privilege of surprising our beloved Dean, Brian Coker, with some recognition that he doesn't know is coming. Surprise, control your face. It's a great moment for you, relish it. Brian, since your arrival in February of 2013, you have been our constant in a sea of change. We all know that the work of student affairs is rarely quiet, but you've had more than your fair share of challenging moments these last seven years. For instance, within your first month, before you even knew where all the buildings on campus were, we welcomed you with a student protest. Sarah and the kids hadn't even moved to Baltimore yet, and I vividly remember the day that I asked you to please, please not leave us just yet. Having worked with you throughout your tenure, I am incredibly proud of the work Student Affairs has accomplished under your leadership, and I know you are too. You speak often of the pride you feel in this division. I hope you know that your leadership as a compassionate, level-headed, and calm soul provided the conditions for our success. You fostered an environment where we could be creative and take risks, work collaboratively and challenge each other, while always making certain the needs of our students were prioritized. Brian, there are many things I will miss about you. Here are just a few, and a few of them might be a surprise to you. One, harassing you about your terrible taste in music during Mobile Dean. Two, witnessing your struggle to find the absolutely perfect acronym when naming a group. Three, hearing you refer to Cookie, our miniature horse, as half a horse. That's the one that probably surprises you the most. I will miss that. And four, speaking of horses, watching you explain your decision to have the equestrian program report to me because Stacy saw a horse once. Throughout the years, we've pushed each other, laughed a lot, and I've learned much by watching you lead. On behalf of your colleagues and friends, thank you. Thank you for your kindness and your warm heart. I may have asked you not to leave seven years ago, but I know the time is right now. Maryville is lucky to have you as their next leader and never doubt that your Goucher family will be rooting for you and all of the Cokers in your next adventure. Dr. Brian Coker, Dean Coker, now President Coker but to my class of 2017, Papa Cokes. Brian, I cannot believe that Stacy and I have been teasing you for seven years now. And to make sure that current students understand the weight of this situation, you came to Baltimore before Lyft and Uber did. My first real interactions with you, Brian, were on the committee that set out to answer the Stimson question. You invited me and three of my peers to go through that process with you, 
because you believe that decisions about students could only be made with students. But perhaps, Brian, in all of the things that I could say about you, I'll reflect on the moment I think you were the proudest I've ever seen, and probably the most tired, too. It was a freezing day in the very beginning of the Black Lives Matter movement. And you stood in the Dorsey courtyard and hand signed hundreds of the same petition in support of a dedicated space and additional resources for students of color. There's always more to be done for racial equity, but you kept every promise that you made that day and Goucher is better because of you. Now, as sad as we are to lose you and all the teasing you that goes along with that, we know that you'll take the memories and lessons and laughs with you to make amazing things happen for the Maryville community. And Goucher will be right here at 1021 Delaney Valley Road, but on Zoom for the foreseeable future, cheering you on. Hey, Brian. Hey, Derek. <laughs> when thinking about what to say, there's endless memories swirling around through my head. But I feel like the most memorable memory that I'll have forever is when I randomly saw you at UMBC with your family during my freshman year. It was surreal seeing you outside Gautier. I honestly didn't think I'd see you anywhere else besides you in front of your computer screen all day. <laughs> I would come into your office every day smiling and you welcomed me. I would say, hey, Brian, you busy right now? Or Brian. I remember when the news broke about you becoming the president of Maryville and I was unsure how a daily conversation would go. But when I walked in, you asked, are you and you chatting upset with me? I looked at you, said, no, Brian, you put your family first. How can anybody be upset with that? Hopefully, like the day I saw you at UMBC, our paths will cross again. I'm going to miss you, Brian. I really am. Yo. Yo. Hi. You so said. writing this speech wasn't an easy task for me. And I was recollecting moments I shared with Brian and it was hard not to get emotional thinking that he is leaving Goucher. And the first time of our meeting was during the protest in Mary Fisher, where Brian has emailed us about the steps that Goucher had taken to address the aftermath of the hate crime. I didn't quite realize that Dean Coker was standing 10 feet away from me when I yelled into the crowd, check your email from Brian Coker, everyone. And it was from there I got to know Brian and his amazing work in the Goucher community. And for me and a lot of other Goucher students, you're a face that we trust and we can come to in need. And you're someone who cares about the community very deeply and you do your best to connect with everyone. And Goucher student government will miss you. I will miss you. And last but not least, Goucher community will miss you. Thank you. Um, thank you all so much. That was not in the script uh, and I was not uh, expecting it. Uh, but thank you so much. Uh, these have been an amazing um, seven years. I've learned a lot and um, I've learned so much from this community. Um, it's been mutual, um, I think, every day. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of what we've done. Uh, it's been a wild ride, as Stacy said, but we've done it together. And, um, you know, I'll never forget when I interviewed uh, to come to Goucher, someone said, um, you need to go there. These students are world changers. And um, I'll never forget those words. And every day at Goucher has uh, confirmed that for me. Um, so from Derek and Yuchen, who are there now, to Deanna, who's out doing great things in the world, um, keep changing the world. Um, so thank you. And um, we'll get back to the script now. Uh, and I'll be uh, retaliating against some of you later. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. It's a privilege to be able to follow Dr. Coker, who paves the pathway for many of us in, in the work that we do. I'm honored today to be present to announce the awards for the Welsh Center for Graduate and Professional Studies. Each year, the graduate programs award a number of recognitions to our top graduate students. 
This year, I'm here to announce three of those awards. The Elizabeth Dean Special Education Award is presented to a Master of Arts in Teaching graduate who has earned certification in special education teaching. This year, the award goes to Marvin Davis. Marvin receives the award as an excellent high school special education teacher and highly effective behavior interventionist who has worked to assist all students in a way that supports the learning content and character. In Marvin's words, I help them to address their emotional needs as well as their academic needs. I teach them how to regulate and to be present in their thinking. Marvin is a model for all of us in excellence in teaching. Congratulations, Marvin Davis. The second Welsh Center Award is the Action Research Award. The Action Research Award is given to the student who demonstrates exemplary research design and methodology in the final culminating project. The Research Award for 2020 goes to Lori Ann Sheehan for the work she completed during her class in action research. Lorianne developed, implemented, and analyzed an action, action research project in her elementary school. This inquiry was completed as part of her MED program in reading instruction. Her research was titled The Effect of Technology on Social Skills Within the Elementary School Classroom. The instruction in her Title I school is no longer being conducted face-to-face. -face. Therefore, her work is very timely and has implications for programs in today's schools. Her advisors in nominating Lorianne for this award commented on the high quality of her investigation and the statistical analysis, stating that the research and the analysis were at a doctoral level. The abstract of her work clearly shows this quality. Congratulations to Lori Ann Sheehan for an outstanding action research project. The third award today is the Harold Atwood Anderson Jr. Award that is designed to recognize researchers who specialize in cultural documentation, particularly those engaged with endangered folkways, and to support Master of Arts in Cultural Sustainability students who are focus focusing on cultural documentation in their master's capstones by providing funding for software and or equipment. The award this year goes to Malik Glee, who is a cultural producer working in and around Washington, DC. Malik is a 2020 graduate of Goucher's Master of Arts in Cultural Sustainability program and has a BFA in theater arts from Howard University. Malik has experience in exhibition, curation, museum leadership, and programming. He currently is the Senior Program Manager for Prince George's Arts and Humanities Council and is on the planning committee for the GoGo -Go Museum and Cafe opening digitally this June. Congratulations to Malik Lee. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I'm now uh, pleased and honored to begin uh, the presentation of the Undergraduate Honors Awards and Prizes. First today, we have the Gertrude Sherby Rand Class of 33 Prize. This year, that prize is shared by Danielle Clapperton, Danielle Leisman, Nora Neely, Olivia Robertson, and Chaz Scott. The Jesse Give everyone a chance there to see the faces and uh, let's um, honor those folks. Congratulations. Next today, we have the Jesse L. King Prize. This year, the prize is shared by Gabrielle Blazik, Rebecca Hellemeyer, Alyssa Long, and Lucas Muya. The Gardner B. Moment Prize in Biology. This year, the prize goes to Dana, or excuse me, Dana Jensen. Congratulations, Dana. 
the Ann Matthews Lacey Prize in Genetics. This year, the prize goes to Caitlin Hennigan. The Tilly Snyder Schofield, Schoenfeld Class of 36 Prize in Biology. This year, the prize is shared by Patricia Arcelana and Isabella Davis. The MACPA Outstanding Student Award. This year, the award goes to Quinn Tran. The Hilda Gabrilov Class of 48 and Dr. Janice Gabrilov Driliatsis Class of 73 Chemistry Prize. This year, the prize is shared by Patricia Arshayana, Isabella Davis, Arnell Fonlin, Elizabeth Hughes, Riley McDonnell, and Lucas Muya. The Edith Ford Sollers Class of 31 Memorial Award in Chemistry. This year, the award goes to Zydell Sanchez. The Millie Belosky Class of 03 Prize in Chemistry. This year, the prize is shared by Jeremy Block and Max Levy. The Louise Kelly Prize in Chemistry. This year, the prize goes to Suleiman Traore. Hello, everybody. I will continue with the prizes. The Edith Snyder Moses Class of 46 Prize in Chemistry. This year, the prize goes to Madeleine Shore. The Gloria Levine Prize in Communication and Media Studies in honor of Brownlee Sands Curran. This year, the prize goes to Callie Miller. The Gail V. Economist Class of 76 First Graduate in Communication and Media Studies Prize in honor of Dr. George and Mrs. Cassie Economist and Aspasia Quesida. This year, the prize goes to Tashi McQueen. The Erin Felarka Class of 05 Memorial Academic Achievement Award. This year, the award is shared by Liv Dawson, Liam Dorsey, and Sarah Wilson. The Erin Felarica Class of 05 Memorial Award for Undergraduate Study. This year, the award is shared by Lillian Fernandez, Brady Rubenstein, and Olivia Witzesnick. The Friend of Goucher Dance Prize for Excellence in Leadership and Service. This year, the prize, the prize goes to Laura Garrett. The Friends of Goucher Dance Prize for Outstanding Achievement in the Major. This year, the prize goes to Sam Gaines. The Max Hodge Child Prize for Excellence in Economics. This year, the prize is shared by Jushan Ho and Hannah Olkovikas. The Bula B. Tatum Award. This year, the award goes to Molly Eggleton. The Education Prize in honor of Ellie Belder. This year, the prize is shared by Callie Blakelock and Alexis Pollack. Rolf E. Moose Prize in Special Education. This year, the prize goes to Madeline Martin. The Lizette Woodworth Reese Award. This year, the award is shared by Ruth DeMeo and Blake Flournoy. The Janet Sloan Muller Class of 1970 Award in English. This year, the award goes to Catherine Shearer. The Isabel Kellogg Thomas English Prize. 
This year, the prize is shared by Claire Edwards, Jas Levy, Joshua Miller, M. Palugi, Evan Van, and Emma Villalon Iglesia. The Eleanor Denoon Class of 36 Poetry Prize. This year, the prize is shared by Sebastian Bronson Body, Flynn Ang, August Schuyler Napolitano, and M. Palugi. The 2020 Kratz Summer Writing Fellowships. This year, the fellowship is shared by Elijah Brooks, Root DeMeo, Sarah Dreyfus, Flynn Ang, Blake Flournoy, August Schuyler Napolitano, M. Palugi, Talia Richter, Matt Savin, Lindsay Sletton, Emily Shepagrell, Anya Schwartz, and Sophia Walker. The Environmental Studies Prize. This year, the prize goes to Molly Sutter. The Calvin Prize in History. This year, the prize is shared by Royal Banks, Kalani Nakiba Rivera, and Katie Yost. The Jean H. Baker Award in History, supported by the Calvin Fund in History. This year, the award goes to Jensen Simmons. The Julie Joy Julie Roy Jeffrey Award in History, supported by the Calvin Fund in History. This year, the award goes to Fayan Kyle. The, the, Mary <laughs> the Mary Catherine Boone Eakin Class of 40 Prize in Computer Science. This year, the prize is shared by Rosie David and Muhammad Fias. The Pearl Davis Levitt Class of 28 Prize in Mathematics. This year, the prize goes to Anya Schwartz. The Miriam M. Torrey Prize in Mathematics. This year, the prize goes to Una Kligman. The Helen Carroll Shelley Class of 24 Prize in Romance Languages. This year, the prize is shared by French majors, Paige Beverly, Daniel Larilliard, Gracie Lefevre, Mandalay Mapofu, Spanish majors, Grace Byers, Ruth Diaz Rivera, Shavana Myers Dixon, Laura Garrett, Miranda McLaren, and Kalani Nakuiba. The Julia Gontram Hill Award in Music. This year, the award goes to Will Zellhofer. The Ruth Blostein Rosenberg Class of 21 Prize in Music. This year, the prize is shared by Ashton Freeman and David Haynes. The Stefania Maniowski Summerman Class of 34 Prize. This year, the prize is shared by Root DeMaio and Yuan Jong. The Gail Davis Morris Class of 53 Prize in Music in Honor of Otto Ortman. This year, the prize goes to Ari Hiller. The Robert Hall Lewis Prize. This year, the prize goes to Darby Bauer. The Beverly and George Pollock Memorial Prize. This year, the prize goes to Stefan Parrott. The Joe Morton Award for Outstanding Achievement in Peace Studies. This year, the award is shared by Mariana Becerra, Elena Millis, and Sophie Weltsy. The Mary Carmen Rose Prize in Philosophy, supported by the Ruth A. Katz Fund. This year, the prize is shared by Elijah Brooks, Edith Hollander, Zach Cassay, 
and Clara Sims. The Alumni Prize for Excellence in Physics. This year, the prize is given to Christine Ung. The Alumni Prize for Service in Physics. This year, the prize is given to Christine Ung. The Sarah T. Hughes 1917 Award for Academic Excellence in Politics and Public Policy. This year, the award is shared by William Jenkins and Jenna Silversmith. The Sarah T. Hughes 1917 Prize for Practical Politics. This year, the prize goes to Brett Rapkin Citrinbaum. The Sarah T. Hughes 1917 Award for Academic Excellence in Intellectual Inquiry in International Relations. This year, the award goes to Danielle Lurieliard. The Lee Snyder Lovett Class of 33 Prize. This year, the prize goes to Zach Cassay. The Ariel Singer Prize. This year, the prize goes to Brett Rapking Citrinbaum. The Shirley C. Seagren Class of 53 Prize for International Studies. This year, the prize goes to Madeleine Coldren. The Ruth C. Wiley Prize in Psychology. This year, the prize goes to Hannah Lerner. The Prize for Excellence in Psychology. This year, the prize goes to Josie McKinley. The Richard Pringle Prize in Critical Psychology. This year, the prize goes to Zainabu NG. The Joan K. Burton Award in Sociology. This year, the award is shared by William Freeman and Jocelyn Ortega. The Betty Cooper Wallerstein Class of 58 Prize in Sociology. This year, the prize is shared by Sharifa Brooks Smith Lowe and Ilana Heller. The George Brendan Dowell Award in Theater. This year, the award is shared by Shoshi Greenberg, Tess Mathewson, and Sarah McCarthy. The Dorothy E. Brody Class of 35 Prize for Academic Achievement in Women's Studies. This year, the prize goes to Basha Hofheimer Nachman. The Dorothy E. Brody Class of 35 Internship in Women's Issues. This year, the internship goes to Mariana Becerra. The Phi Beta Kappa Brooke Pierce Award in the Humanities and Social Sciences. This year, the award goes to Olivia Robertson. The Phi Beta Kappa Brooke Pierce Award in the Fine Arts. This year, the award goes to Laura Garrett. The Phi Beta Kappa Nancy J. Engelhart Class of 64 Memorial Prize in the Sciences. This year, the prize is shared by Sylvia Beam and Dana Jensen. The Nina Tala Ewan Class of 17-2 Memorial Fund. This year, the Memorial Fund goes to Izzy Moraney. The Mary Hortop Greedy, 46, Prize for Serv Social Service to Baltimore. This year, the prize goes to Shabria Canada. The Ruth Baird Thompson Class of 31 Award for Scholarship sportsmanship and athleticism. This year the award is shared by Nicole Blades, Grace Byers, Sky Cosby, Natalie Fitch, Dana Jensen, Claire Cressy, Gracie Lefevre, Mabel Lujan, Dwayne Morton, Hannah Okavikas, and Megan Winner. Congratulations. The Scholar Athlete Award this year, the award goes to Riley McDonald. The Robert Lawand Team 
Academic Achievement Award. This year, the award goes to the women's tennis team with a team GPA of 3.7. The team captain is Katie Mazurka. Congratulations. The Martha Nichols Class of 38 prize. This year, the prize goes to Alana Heller. The Maryland Silver Aptor Class of 41 Memorial Prize. This year, the prize goes to Hannah Jury. The Rhoda M. Dorsey Award. This year, the award goes to Ridwan Lawal. Congratulations. The Elizabeth Nuss Emerging Leader Award. This year, the award goes to Ayana Solomon. And now for the Senior Leadership Awards. This year, the award is shared by the following students. Callie Blakelock, Jessica Castro, Deja Ellis, Alana Heller, Zach Casse, Ridwan Lawal, Zanabu Inji, Antonia Pettit, Brett rapkin Citronbaum, and Ali Rosen. Congratulations to all of you. The Jennifer Margolis Marquez, Class of 01, Prize in Environmental Sustainability. This year, the prize goes to Molly Sutter. The Ethel Marie Apter Halpern, Class of 42, Memorial Community Service Prize. This year, the prize goes to Zanabu Inji. The Evenden, Evenden Daly Herman, Class of 37 Prize. This year, the prize goes to Win Win. Sorry, script folder uh, <laughs> issue there. The Kareen Elaine Amos Class of 93 Memorial Prize. This year, the prize is shared by Alexandra De Giovanni, Ridwan Lawal, Neve Levinson, and Raleigh. McDonald. Congratulations to all of you. The Class of 1905 Fellowship. This year the fellowship is given to Sar Sharifa Brooks Smith Lowe, Taryn Rosen, and Jordan Tice. The Stimson Duval Fellowship. This year the fellowship is shared by Emily Fontenoy and Marisa Spear. The Elizabeth King Elliott Fellowship. This year, the fellowship goes to Janelle Palmer. The Flora E. Lang Langdon Fellowship. This year, the fellowship goes to Matt Woodson. The Dean Van Meter Alumni Fellowship. This year, the fellowship is shared by Jessica Castro and Julia Gerhardt. The Eleanor Vo Bos Class of 56 Fellowship. This year, this fellowship goes to Thayen Kyle. The Io de Gromers Fellowship Fund. This year, the fellowship goes to Megan Seco. The Eleanor Spencer Award. This year, the award goes to Olivia Robertson. The Julia Rogers Research Prize. This year, the prize is shared by Andres F. Cordova Arroyo and Olivia Robertson, Honorable Mentions, Emma Loftis, and Ania Schwartz. The Margaret Guchon Prize for Arts and Literature. This year, the prize goes to Joshua Miller. The Appleston Sweden Book Collecting Prize. This year, the prize is shared by first prize, Ujen Gwen, second place, Elijah Brooks, third place, Alexis Fisher and Sarah Wilson. Honorable mentions to Rosie David and Kelly Holland. 
the Brooke and Carol Pierce Center for Undergraduate Research and Special Collections Fellowship. This year, the fellowship goes to Joshua Miller. Congratulations all. Next is membership in the beta chapter of beta of Maryland chapter of Phi Beta Kappa. Those elected in fall 2019, Skylar Akerson, Lindsay Brewer, Dana Jensen, Una Kligman, Hannah Lerner, Tess Mathewson, and Basha Hofheimer Nachman. Those elected in spring 2020, Mariana Becerra, Sebastian Bronson Body, Addie Daniels, Isabella Davis, Shoshi Greenberg, Edith Hollander, William Jenkins, Danielle Leisman, Emma Loftus, Katarina Mulchen, Brett Rapkin Citronbaum, Olivia Robertson, Katherine Shearer, Jenna Silversmith, Jensen Simmons, Eleanor Strewing, and Clara Sims. Congratulations all on your awards. The Elizabeth Deal Lawrence Class of 66 and Brian Huntington Lawrence Prize for Innovative Teaching is awarded annually to graduating seniors or recent alumni and alumni of the college who are entering the Teach for America program. Now, Betsy Lawrence is a graduate of 1966, was a special education teacher and psychologist for over 35 years. So she and her husband, Hunt, wanted to find a way to recognize those Goucher graduates who have chosen to go into the noblest of professions, becoming a public school teacher. So each Lawrence Prize recipient receives an award of $25,000 to help provide financial support during their two years of service. This is incredible. This year, we are especially pleased to recognize four graduating seniors who have made the commitment to do what Goucher grads have done for best for over 135 years, make a difference in communities across America. So our award winners will be joining Teach for America programs in cities spread across the nation from Baltimore to Las Vegas to Cleveland, Ohio to Richmond, California. So it is my honor to present the Elizabeth Deal Lawrence 66 Class of 66 Award and Brian Huntington Lawrence Prize for Innovative Teaching to the following four individuals. Daisha Ellis. So Daisha will be teaching special education in Baltimore, Maryland. And Daisha has written, I never imagined that I would be a teacher. It was not until my junior year at Goucher that it began to click. I began to take education courses and participated in field work, and I fell in love with the classroom. The one downside I saw with Teacher for America was that I would possibly not be placed in Baltimore. As I expressed to the Teach America team, I helped take care of my little brothers. There was no way I could move away for them. So I am delighted that they understand, stood that, and placed me in Baltimore City, and I cannot wait to see what is next as I embark on this journey. Ridwan Lawal. So Ridwan will be teaching math at a middle school in Cleveland, Ohio. Ridwan has spoken about why he chose to teach uh, and pursue Teach for America. The main reason I joined Teach for America was the passion behind the work we do. I have a passion to provide students with better learning environment and an experience. I want students leaving middle school feeling more comfortable with math because that is a subject that often divides students into categories of whether they are smart or not. If you don't feel smart, then you don't think it is for you. School should be a place where everyone is constantly eager to learn, not a place where people are giving up on the idea of learning. Yanesha Taylor. Yanesha will be teaching English at the secondary level in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yanesha is very clear about why she chose to pursue Teach for America. I have a true passion and heart for helping people, and I know that I was put on this earth to share my light with others. And finally, Zanabu Najeh. Zanabu will be teaching special education in Richmond, California. I joined Teach for America to continue what I've been doing at Goucher College. I wanted to expand my network of change makers dedicated to social justice and educational equity. I also feel like if I learned anything at Goucher through my work in community-based learning, but also through courses 
where I've had to reflect on my own experience, experiential knowledge is untouchable and highly valuable in social justice work. So I hope to use my own experience, having graduated from a public high school that did not meet my academic or social emotional needs, plus the experience of accu accumulated working in community-based learning to help cultivate safe space for students to grow and learn holistically. Congratulations to Adesha, Ridwan, Zanabu, and Yanesha, and congratulations in your pursuit of Teach for America. Next is the Caroline Dobler Brookerl Faculty Award. Through the generosity of Caroline Dobler Brookerl, class of 1925, Goucher College is able to honor a faculty member whose accomplishments in the areas of teaching, scholarly activity, and service deserve special recognition. With so many excellent faculty members at Goucher, it is always difficult to choose a single recipient. The winner of this year's Brookerl Award came to Goucher in 2009. The nominator writes of them, in the nearly 11 years, I have seen her emerge as an invaluable leader among the faculty and one of the most committed teachers and community members I have ever known. Her teaching includes recent development of an innovative January term course that was impressive in its scope and a wonderful opportunity for our students. Her scholarly research includes publications ranging from pedagogy to politics. And her service to the faculty and to the college is without peer at this institution. It has been a true pleasure to serve with her during her time as faculty chair and to witness her indefatigable dedication to our students, to her colleagues, and to Goucher. It gives me great pleasure to announce this year's recipient of the Brookerl Award, Associate Professor Nina Kesnunis. Congratulations, Nina. Next, we present the Excellence in Teaching Awards. Academic success of our students is due to the hard work and talent of, but also to the faculty members who are dedicated teachers and mentors. The awards for excellence in teaching were established to recognize and encourage outstanding instruction, effective facilitation of learning, and innovation in and out of the classroom. Today, we have the opportunity to recognize two faculty members for excellence in teaching. One award will be presented to a faculty member who is not tenured, and one to a tenured faculty member. First, the award for non-tenured faculty member. This faculty member has been at Goucher for some time. She teaches everything from first year seminar to classes for adult learners who have already obtained their bachelor's degree. Students love her classes as she has a boundless enthusiasm for the subject matter and a joy for conveying this information to her students while still maintaining a commitment to detail. She is the model of what a Goucher teacher should be. Perhaps not surprising since she is a Goucher alum herself. We are very pleased to be able to recognize her for all of her contributions in the classroom and in the laboratory. This year's teaching award to a non-tenured faculty member goes to Rukia Ahmed Schofield. Congratulations, Rukia. The nominator for our next award noted this faculty member's student-centered pedagogies. The nominator observes that, quote, her course materials never gather dust. Each time she teaches a course, she brings something fresh to it. To help herself take the long view in this regard, she prepares her courses an entire semester in advance of teaching them. Her innovations include a recent emphasis on problem solving, in which students tackle seemingly wildly different problems in terms of classification of type of problem or schema, previously unseen to them. Among many great student comments is, quote, you're very good at nudging us in the right direction and then letting us figure things out on our own with occasional hints. I'm pleased to present this year's teaching award for a tenured faculty member to Professor Jill Zimmerman. Congratulations, Jill, and congratulations to all. So congratulations to everyone today, students, staff, faculty, tenured, non-tenured, across the board, and a special thank you and bon voyage to Dr. Brian Coker as he journeys next to his next um, appointment. So very happy to have you here. 
very happy that we had time to overlap, if only this year. I want to say a special shout out to this year's class of 2020. You've endured an amazing once in a lifetime, once in a century event, and you've came through it just great. So we will remember you. We are looking forward to what you do going forward. And thank you to all the members of the Goucher community that have joined us today, family, friends, and everyone for celebrating the amazing achievements of our outstanding students. So go Gophers, make us proud. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>